was 12, I saw the silent drill team for the first time and immediately they just had me at awe on the edge of my seat. Just the precision and the teamwork and as soon as I saw it, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I joined the military because my father was in the military for 30 years and I knew I kind of want to follow into his footsteps and um, I, was, I planned to do it right out of high school but I kind of messed around a little bit, had fun, and then it just dawned on me that, you know, this was my plan all along to go, so why not now? I came from a very strong, proud Army family, and it was just something that you did. To me, there's no greater honor than to serve one's country and its flag. I wanted to be part of a team for a bigger reason than I can ever experience anywhere else. I was deployed six times. My first deployment was in 1991, Desert Storm. I was so excited to be there. I was all in. And I went kind of from this feeling of just like super gung-ho to like, holy shit, I'm here. After my promotion, um, we found out about the Twin Towers on September 11, 2001. And we were all outside and next minute, uh, Pentagon was hit. And we all ran to the Pentagon as fast as we could. I was initially excited, I loved it, but after about the third month, you realize how much danger you know, was around any corner. There's always a fear of being injured, but I think a lot of guys had the same mentality as I, and it was that it won't be me. The reality, when we would leave in the morning on a mission, every day, more than likely, one of our trucks would be hit. And it was just literally, it was a feeling, every day when we'd take off a Russian roulette, whose day was it to get hit by the IED? After the, the blast, um, when I woke up, I, I didn't know what happened. I was dizzy, uh, vomiting, lightheaded. My responsibility was to remove non-survivors at that point. And um, upon removing non-survivors, I stepped into a hole and um, concrete came over my left ankle. And as I pulled it out, um, it shattered. My injuries happened when I came home and my symptoms continued to get worse. And then over time, I was medically declared um, not fit for service due to my combat injuries. I woke up in an incubator. I didn't really know the extent of my injuries outside of my legs and I freaked out, yelled, uh, screamed. I didn't know that I had PTSD because I wasn't aware of really what it was. I'll have these moments during the day where Something happens, someone says something, I glance something on TV, I smell something, and I'm right back in Iraq. The only way I can get through each night was to drink as much as I could, because it would make me pass out. At one point I was on oxy, cotton, um, fentanyl, and Percocet. Uh, it was hard for me to cope with. I, I was in a dark spot. I was on medication for for migraines, for, for nightmares, to, to go to sleep, to, to wake up, and then another medication to, to stay alert. It was a Band-Aid put on a, um, on a wound that, that really needed, I don't know, a tourniquet, I guess. I learned about Catch a Lift when I was at a military event and someone had a catch a lift shirt on and, and I said, what's that? And he's like, it's um, an organization that helps pay for gym memberships for vets. I contacted catch a lift as soon as I got back and I applied and I was, I was awarded a grant. But little did I know how much impact it really would have in my life. I was going through physical therapy and, and, I, and I met a Marine who was part of Catch a Lift. He explained to me uh, what Catch a Lift was, and about six months later, I, I, I looked it up, and, and it was a turning point in my life. 
I came across Catch a Lift by chance several years ago, and at the time I definitely wasn't ready to commit to a fitness lifestyle. And once I started working out steady a few years ago after my daughter was born, I kind of remembered Catch a Lift again. And then I was like, I should look up that organization again and see, you know, if they could help me out. I was in the VA office one day and I saw a Catch a Lift flyer. You know, here I am three years later and um, I learned very quickly that my quality of life had changed, but I also learned that my life wasn't over. That was just the end of a life. And now that I have a new one, I have to make the best of it. A lot of people think it's just a gym membership, that's all it is, but it's not. It's therapy. Fitness is extremely important for veterans. A lot of veterans want to remain in that one alpha state that they were in. It's, it's imperative. It's the good thing about the Catch a Left World. We're all like-minded, we all can relate to each other's injuries, and we all can really understand what each individual go through and, and to bond with other brothers and sisters. It's just like being, being in your unit. One of my biggest problems was my isolation and just not having contact with anyone outside of my home. And with Catch a Lift, slowly I started to build relationships again. Before my injury, I thought what mattered most was the fact that I was the biggest, strongest, fastest guy around. Now I have compassion, whereas before I would just look at you and be like, you're weak. You know, it's, I'm just a better person overall now. The way I see my life now, I value my life. It has been a blessing that um, Catch a Lift came in my life, and it's definitely changed the person who I am. I felt that 13 years were taken from me, and I was going to get every year back. If I didn't have um, a gym membership, if I didn't have this outlet, um, I don't know if I'd be here today. Catch a Lift has truly shown me how much I still have to offer to this world and to offer to my veteran brothers and sisters. I thought my mission was over. I no longer had a tribe. Catch a Lift has given me a tribe back.